to start this conducted emission test of this product, I often use a software together with the spectrum analyzer. The software is EMC View, which is developed by TechBox. There are many good reasons of using this software, which we will see during the demonstration. This software, I believe, is compatible with most of the spectrum analyzers from Rigo, Sigland, and Rod Schwartz. And in my opinion, if you have already spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on a Listen or Temcel or Current Probe, then it is worth perhaps spending a few hundred dollars to get this software for the huge benefits that it could bring for your EMC pre compliance testing. Okay, let's start the software. And as you can see, the user interface is quite neat in the sense that you have the main screen here and all the functions showing here. Let's just do a demonstration here. So the first thing is you need to connect to your device. So on the device, I connect, collect device. Then because the spectrum analyzer I use is connected via USB, so connect USB, search. And then you can see I found the device and then connect. You can also get your Visa version, which is showing here. Then you just close it. Then on the uh, left button of the screen, you can see my um, Sigland SSA3021 is being connected. Okay. So as I mentioned, this benchmark product is a handheld mains, mains product. So we need to test the conducting emission to the correct standards. Now, the software itself comes with lots of standard limits and test preset files. So if I now collect, collect file, then I want to load a project. Load project. So all projects are saved in a folder called source folder. As you can see on the screen, you have a wide selection of different testing standards. You have the automotive BMW testing standards, FCC 15, which is the uh, standard they test in the United States, and you have the CISPA 11 to 35, all sorts. So for this product, I know the proper testing standards that it needs to be tested against is EN 55014. So I'm gonna click this one. So in the subfolder, you can see you have CN, RN, and TC, which stands for Conducted Emission Test, Radiated Emission Test, and Tencel Test. Now, CISPA has defined uh, limits for Tencel tests, so that's quite uh, straightforward. You can just load the project file and test using a Tencel. For this test, I'm going to test the conducting emission using Listen. So click and here again you have lots of selections and for this product we will test EN55014 household mains so double click that okay so the project is being loaded so the limit is showing here as you can see the blue line is the quasi peak limit for this product and the red line is the average limit Okay, and you can see the start frequency is 150 kilohertz and stopped at 30 megahertz. You can define a margin, which, you know, if you want to say, okay, I wanted to achieve a margin of 10 dB or 5 dB, you can put in here. So in this case, we put, let's say, 6 dB margin. And it gives you 6 dB margin just for the average value. And of course, you can put the same margin on the average. And you can see the blue dashed line as the margin value for quasi peak. Here is the cable um, characteristics, RF characteristics. So you can select your cable, which is often tiny, but let's just put it in, in this case. So in this case, I'm using uh, N type to BNC type, 74. 
five cent centimeter long RG223 cable. So click that. And for the listen, it is a tech box model, which is tech box TBL5016. And now, even with this model, you can have the attenuator off and on options. So this we already explained before. So we, when you have attenuator on, of course, you protect the uh, RF input of your spectral analyzer. But often for pre-compliance tests, I tend to turn the attenuator off. But of course, before that, I, of, I always make sure that the uh, measure the uh, value not exceeding the maximum input of the RF input. So in this case, I'm, I'm selecting uh, 5016-2, which is the listen model, and with the attenuator off. Okay. The next is the uh, amplifier or attenuator ratio, which you can select uh, 10 dB, 20 dB, um, or any values you want. You can also define your own in the uh, log file. Then it is the antenna um, RF characteristics. Um, so in this case, they have some tech box anten antennas here, uh, because in this case, we're not using antenna for radiated emission test. So just put none. Moving towards the segment setup. Now, one of the reasons I use this software is because it does the segment scan automatically and then basically stitch all the segments together and then giving the plot uh, on the uh, picture showing here. If I hadn't had this software that means I would need to do the scan manually by myself using the spectral analyzer and then I need to find a way of stitching each segment together. You might ask, oh, why do you need to scan it by segment? Well, that is a good question. Most of the spectrum analyzers sweep the frequency range in discrete steps. Typically, the number of frequency steps per sweep is identical with the number of display pixels in the X direction. For instance, the Siglent SSA3021 model that I have has a resolution of 751 frequency points per sweep. Well, I think most of the rival ones, I believe they have about 600 measurement points per sweep. Spectrum analyzers really power up with the sweep set to full span and resolution bandwidth um, set to one megahertz. When you measure some signals, sometimes you will find that the amplitude or the frequency point is not displayed correctly. This is due to the fact that if we look at the filter curves and the spacing between adjacent frequency points, you will see that if I divide 2.1 gigahertz by 751 frequency points, this will result roughly 2.8 megahertz. Yeah, so there's a big difference between 2.8 megahertz and 1 megahertz. Let's take another example. We look at the conducting emission test we're going to do. In most cases, this frequency sweep starts from 150 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz and has a resolution bandwidth of 9 kilohertz. These are all defined by CISPA. If we want to make a full sweep across the entire 30 megahertz, that means we, ha we can do the math, 30 megahertz divided by 751 points, that gives us 39.9 kilohertz. And compared again with the resolution band with 9 kilohertz, surely you will miss lots of useful information. So in order to cover the entire frequency spectrum, CISPA 16 actually defines the adjacent frequency points shall not be more than half of the resolution bandwidth. So in this case, again, 9 kilohertz divided by 2 should be 4.5 kilohertz. So with this information, and the uh, we as 
as, as long as we understand the uh, our spectrum analyzer model correctly, we can do the math, and it shows on in this table based on the model that I have, which means that for the conducted emission test we're going to do from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, we will need to split the entire spectrum into at least nine segments with uh, uh, span of 3.38 megahertz. Now, you can of course do this test manually. So basically you, you uh, start the frequency range at a certain point and then you only scan for a range of 3.38 megahertz and then you start the next segment again, saving all the data in the spectrum analyzer in, in data points and then you extract those data and then you can do some post analysis which is fine but by having a software that can do it for you automatically within you know five or six minutes really saves huge amount of time and effort that's why I tend to use software when when it comes to EMC pre-compliance testing such as this you have segment set one and segment set two. And the set one is going to do a scan based on the average um, scan. And the segment set two is based on the peaks scan. Okay. And uh, you can see set one is now selected. So if I click start now, the software basically will tell the spectral analyzer to start an average scan. Once that is done, I then can select set two and then start it again and the result will show here as well with the peak scan okay and um, so that's the most important parameters to set for this test so we set it just as it is okay and put it back to set one and what else we need to uh, to do I think yeah for a quick scan that's probably enough um, it's worth mentioning that you can save this project, right? So with all this test setup, I already, you know, defined, I can save the project, yeah? The default uh, folder is still within the source folder. So I would suggest you keep in that location. So I put in source and I can just give a, a, a name. So in this case, I can call it pre compliance test one okay so then I'll save it so next time I can just load project which is already saved here and I don't need to change all these uh, settings okay so now with all this set up and um, connected properly to my spectrum analyzer the next thing I need to do is click start okay so now we're gonna click start and as you can see, um, the uh, software basically sends commands to my spectrum analyzer. The uh, scanning started now. All the resolution bandwidth, video um, bandwidth, and stop and start frequency has been uh, predefined, as I said, in the segment. Um, file so you can see here we're doing a frequency step of 235 kilohertz scan so that's the first segment scanning finished now we're starting from 3.75 megahertz uh, sorry we're starting from 2.5 megahertz and now we'll start stop at 5 megahertz um, yeah so you can see all the uh, values are predefined in the setup file in EMC view so very easy we just wait until the scan of each segment is finished all these data will be trans transferred back to the software and the software will automatically stitch all the segments uh, scanning results together and put the results on the um, output um, file so let's just have a look so yeah yeah the first segment data is now stored back into the PC as you can see from the screen we have a uh, average scanning results showing here and currently it is still be below the um, 
margin line, which is pretty good. Um, the third scan also starts from 150 kilohertz to 2.5 megahertz. And as we just speak, the next scan, the segment data will be now put in again. And here also you can see the estimated remaining time, which is estimated at six minutes left. So it's pretty easy, as I said, you just wait for six minutes. In the meantime, you can get yourself a cup of tea and um, just wait until the results are finished. Okay, so after a few minutes, both sc uh, scanning for average and peak scanning are now completed and we have the results showing in the uh, software interface. And you can already see that I have labeled um, these limits correctly. And I can also label these two traces uh, which are just plotted, right? Doing that is fairly easy. You just, to, you just need to um, go to labels, yeah, and then uh, set a label. Then here, there, there's a new label that you can drag easily and then right click and then you can edit. So basically here, we know the purple line is peak value. So I can just say uh, PK, yeah. And then you can do the same for the average, okay? So the we can see here in this case, the um, plotted results are all under the limit and also even within the margin we, get, we, we, we predefined, which is pretty good. Uh, which shows this product surely will pass conducting emission uh, uh, scanning. So there are a lot more functions within the capability of this software, which we can't cover everything in one session. Some useful features are found very um, high efficient. For instance, if you don't want to do a full scan from 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, what you can do is you can select segments here and you can see um, you can drag each seg segment into different position and you can by selecting all or specific segment then you just do a very short uh, quick scan and to just focus on th that area so that's one function i highly recommend uh, other useful functions include you can also use this software as a generator to generate, um, uh, you know, your spectrum analyzers, tracking generator connected to an RF amplifier to do some immunity tests. One other useful function is you, if you go to fire and then you go to utilities, you can save the results as pictures, as CSV file, or what I found most useful is you save chart. So by clicking save chart, you basically save all the raw data in your computer. And one of the benefits is, of course, we just did this scan for this benchmark testing. We save this chart, and then we can do another scan of another product, perhaps it's your, a product from your customer that asks you to look at, and then you can basically compare the performance of that product with these benchmark results.